God is good. We serve a faithful God. We serve a good God. We serve a kind God, a merciful God, a sincere God. Thank God for God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Let's thank God for the angels. Let's thank God for everything. Father, we are grateful this morning. We thank you, O Lord, and we appreciate all that you have done. We thank you, everlasting Father, for your love. Thank you, O God, for protecting us. Thank you, King of kings, mighty one of Israel, for preserving us and supplying all our needs. O God, according to your riches in glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Let somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to have you all ready to hear God's word. You are blessed and highly favored. You are protected. You are preserved. You are watched over by angels, special angels from God. No evil shall befall you. No evil shall come near your dwelling place. Every plan of the enemy has failed. His agenda has failed. His plots has failed. His evil intention has failed. His ill will has failed. And God's people are free. Somebody is free. Somebody is blessed. Somebody is being elevated. God's goodness, God's Shekinah glory is upon you. In the name of Jesus. Today I want to speak on a very powerful and very important subject. And I entitled today's message, Words are powerful. Words are powerful. I want to talk about the words that comes out of our mouth. Every single day of our lives, whether we are home, or we are outside, we talk and we speak. As a matter of fact, when the Bible says that God created us in his image and in his likeness, in a nutshell, what God meant is that we have been made as speaking spirits. God made us in his image and in his likeness. God brought everything that we see in existence from the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, through his spoken word. When God said, let there be light, the Bible says that there was light. So God made us in his image and in his likeness, which simply means we are speaking spirits and so we have to know that the words that comes out of our mouth are very powerful i will say that the words that comes out of our mouth are creative force or the words that comes out of our mouth has a creative force accompany it he sent forth his word and his word healed their disease the word of god has so much power that when it's being released when it is being spoken it has the ability to heal the word of god has the ability to restore the word of god has the ability to bring peace and joy hallelujah and so today we're going to address the issues pertaining to the words that we speak i'm gonna teach amen i'm gonna teach because it's very very important for us to learn learn god's word especially when it comes to the words that comes out of our mouth when it comes to the things that we say hallelujah and so in the book of psalm chapter 57 psalm 57 verse 11 or verse 5 and 11, David spoke the same language. David made the same declaration. David found himself in the cave of Adullam. David was going through a lot of challenges. David was going through 
difficulties, David was going through attacks, King Saul and his own whole army were tracking David down to kill him. And David found himself surrounded with people who are also troubled and damaged, deranged people. But when David spoke to God in prayer for deliverance, in prayer for protection, at some point in time, David realized that it was okay for him to ask God to protect him. It was okay for him to pray that God will guide him. It was okay for God to preserve him. But at some point in time, verse 5, he said, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. This is what he decided to say. This is how he purposed to pray. After he had made all his prayers and all his declarations, he realized that he had to change his language. He had to change his vocabulary. He had to change his mindset. He had to change the way he's seeing things, his perception concerning the whole situation that he was going through. You know, sometimes when we are going through attacks and we're going through challenges, we are moved and compelled, challenged to speak certain things that we ought not to be speaking. If biblically you are inclined, you'll understand where I'm coming from. And so here we see David changing his language. Now he started exalting God. He said, be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. And then verse 11, he prayed the same prayer again. He said, be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Can you imagine when you are going through challenges and you are going through problems and you are going through um, difficulties or you are panicking or things are not going well, instead of you to open your mouth and complain, Instead of you to open your mouth and ask God for selfish gains, why don't you open your mouth and tell God that be exalted. This is so powerful. Be exalted, my God. Above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. This should be our attitude. Instead of us complaining, instead of us grumbling, Instead of us crying and pointing fingers, let us learn to open our mouth in praise to our God. Let us open our mouth in worship to our God. Hallelujah. It is very, very important for us to be careful of the words that comes out of our mouth. As I said earlier on, words carry a lot of power. You frame your world with your words. The things that comes out of your mouth will determine who you are or who you are going to be in the future. You are framing your world with your words. You are a product of your speech. You are a product of your speech. What you say is what you become. What is in your heart will determine what you say. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So make sure that you compile the word of God in your heart. Make sure you compile faith in your heart. Because what is in your heart will determine what you will say. And what you say is what you become. Because there is life and death in the power of your tongue. Your tongue carries so much power that you don't even have an idea about it. And so even if it is not looking good, you better open your mouth and say, this looks good. Because what your eye is seeing is different from what your spiritual eyes are seeing. And so let your spiritual eyes begin to see the unseen. Hallelujah. Don't ever let your mind tell you that you're going to die. 
Don't ever let the devil tell you that you're not going to make it. Don't let demons tell you that you're not going to succeed or you're, going, you're not going to excel. Hallelujah. That is the lie of the devil. So I'll say it again. You are framing your world with your words. It doesn't matter where you say those things. If you are on the phone and you're speaking negative things, you are framing your world. If you are in your closet and you speak negative things, doubt and unbelief, you are framing your world. When you are driving, and you are, it doesn't matter where you are. What really matters is what language are you speaking? What words are, what words are coming out of your mouth? What is coming out of your mouth is what you will become. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So my brothers and my sisters, let's be extremely careful of the products of our speech. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, I said it, I'm going to teach. Amen. Teaching. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 12, verse 36. He said, but I say to you that for every idle word man may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. So in the day of judgment, there is going to be accountability of every word. I am not saying it, but there is going to be an accountability of every word that came out of your mouth. And so now, if you keep on saying, I'm dead, oh, I'm dead, oh, I'm going to die, oh, oh, it's not well with me. Every negative word or idle word that you speak is going to materialize into fruition. And it can cause a lot of harm. Words has the ability to kill. Words has the ability to make alive. Words can be a curse. Words can also be a blessing. Words can bring fear. Words can bring faith. Words can bring doubt. Words can bring belief. Words can bring anger. Words can bring joy and love. So let us guide our tongue. Let us guide our mouth with the words that comes out. Because when we speak carelessly, when we are angry and we are upset and things don't go our way and we begin to speak negatively, the word of God says we will be judged. We will be judged or give an account of every idle word that comes out of our mouth. Verse 37 says, for by your word, you will be justified and by your word, you will be condemned. Our justification is based on the words that came out of our mouth or the words that come out of our mouth. Our justification for God to see you as a just man or a just woman, he's going to look at your words. Your words will determine your justification and your words also will determine condemnation. For by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. But I, lo I love the Message Bible on this one. Listen to what the Message Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37. The Message Bible says, Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Every one of these careless words, every one of these careless words, is going to come back to haunt you. Every, he said, let me tell you something. Every one of these careless words is going to come back to haunt you. Every careless word that you speak is going to come back and haunt you. 
So don't speak carelessly. Don't speak careless words. It has power in it. When you speak good words, it comes back to bless you. When you speak fake words, when you speak God's words, it brings blessings into your life. But when you speak careless words, the Bible says it also comes back to haunt you. He continues by saying, there will be a time of reckoning. Words are powerful. Words are powerful. And that's where, where I got the title of today's message. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Take the words that come out of your mouth seriously. Be careful of the words that comes out of your mouth. Especially those who have emotional imbalances. Be careful of the words that comes out of your mouth. That's what the Bible is saying. Take them seriously. Then he said, words can be your salvation. Words can be your salvation. And words can also be your damnation. Words can be your salvation. And words can be your damnation. So it means that words can give you salvation. The words that comes out of our mouth will bring you your salvation if it is positive words, if they are godly words, if they are good words, they will bring you salvation. But if they are not good words, they bring damnation. Hallelujah. And so let's be very, very careful of how we utter words. Let's be very, very careful of the words that comes out of our mouth hallelujah in the book of genesis chapter 22 genesis chapter 22 verse 15 hear what the word of god says in genesis chapter 22 verse 15 then the angel of the lord called to abraham in this event god has required from abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac, his only son, the one he loves most. God said to Abraham, I want the one you love most. A lot of times we hear things from God, we hear things from people, we hear things from men of God, and we get upset, we get all defensive, and then we begin to say things that we ought not to be saying. Abraham heard from God. The angel, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this, this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sun which is on the seashore. Why was God going to bless Abraham? Why was God going to multiply his descendants? Because Abraham did something. And that which he did was according to what God has commissioned him. He did what God has asked him to do. I read again. He said, Blessing, I will bless you, and multiply, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sun which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. There are things that we can do that will cause God to bless us. And it's not going to be just us, but he will bless our children, our posterity, and our descendants. And for that reason, we have to be extremely careful to meet the demands that God brings to the table. 
He said, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Because you have obeyed my voice. Because you have obeyed my words. When we obey the word of God, we are obeying his voice. If we live our life according to the spoken word of God, God cannot but to bless us. God will bless you. God will bless your children. God will bless your family. God will bless your loved ones. He will bless your business. He will bless everything that concerns you as long as you are walking in total obedience. Hallelujah. As long as we are walking in total obedience, God is going to see through that it is well with you. When God called Abraham, Abraham didn't have much. He didn't have anything. But we see how God flourished him and God prospered him. Why? Because Abraham was a doer of God's demand or God's word. Praise God. You shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. Just be obedient to the voice of God. Be obedient. Be obedient student of God. Whatever God tells you to do, just do it. Just do it. They ran out of wine. They went to tell Jesus' mother. Jesus' mother said to the servant that whatever he tells you to do, do it. The problem with a lot of Christians is that we always try to think through what God is saying, especially when he's using the mouth of God to speak. Hallelujah. But everything that we are speaking, we are reading, we are reading the Bible. We are speaking God's word. And so God spoke to Abraham. Abraham did exactly what God had asked him to do. And he received blessing. His descendants received blessing. His posterity received blessing. And so you will be blessed. You will equally be blessed. As a matter of fact, because of what Abraham did, you are walking in the blessings of Abraham. But Jesus said something to them. He said to them that they said, we are descendants of Abraham. We are children of Abraham. But Jesus said that, well, too bad. If you are descendants of Abraham, then do the things that Abraham did. Abraham obeyed God's word. Abraham did not question God. Abraham did not withhold his only begotten son. And so whatever demand that God places on us, let us meet the demand. You cannot outbid God. God is so faithful. God is so kind. God is so good. All that God needs from you and I is obedient. Hallelujah. Obedient to his word. Praise God. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 10. Isaiah number 10. I'm building my foundation. So I can deliver God's word. Listen to what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 10. Isaiah 10 verse 1. The word of God says, Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees. Ah, this is serious. He said, Woe unto those who decree unrighteous decree. What are you decreeing? Every word that comes out of your mouth is a decree. So what are you decreeing? What are you decreeing? Make sure that what is coming out of your mouth is full of blessing. Make sure that it is good decree. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, who write misfortune, which they have prescribed. Let's be very careful of what we say. And let's be careful of what is written on the tablet of our heart. There are so many things that we have written on the tablet of our heart that God is mindful of. God is concerned about our heart. He said, guide your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes all the issues of life. Your whole issue is in your heart. Your whole issue, that which concerns you, has to do with what is in your heart. What is in your heart matters to God. God is not just even waiting for you to just speak. God is looking in your heart. God is looking in your heart. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decree. Who write misfortune which they have prescribed. The devil writes his evil things down. The devil equally speaks negativity. Last week, the Lord revealed to me the plans, the ordinances, the decree, and the prescription of the devil. And I named them the four Ds. The four Ds, one, 
Satan is planning death for God's people. Satan has written down to bring deformity. And then he has also on his agenda defamation. And then he also has in, on his tablet destruction. But God said, none of his plans shall come to pass. This is how we overcome the devil. The word of God says that no weapon of the enemy formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you must condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of God. The heritage of the servants of God is to open their mouth and condemn. Open their mouth and destroy. You can condemn with your language. You can destroy with your language. You can bind with your language. You can curse with your language. And so all the four deeds that the enemy has planned and plotted, written down, his decrees has failed. Why? Because I said so. Because I am decreeing it that it has failed. I am declaring it that it has failed. I overrule it. I declare that it shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. You are the redeemed of the Lord so Satan cannot touch you. You are the redeemed of the Lord, so no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are the righteousness of God because you carry the Spirit of God in you. You carry the presence of God in you. The Holy Ghost is with you. The angels of God are watching over you. And so no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But somebody has to learn to open his mouth and make these declares, declarations. Hallelujah. You see, Satan knows how God operates. Satan knows how this kingdom principles function. And so we also have to adapt and speak the language that God speaks. Because Satan has this same thing going on in his mind. See something that happened. I just want to unfold something to somebody. So that you guide your heart. So that you guide your mind. So that you guide your tongue. Hallelujah. In the book of Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55 verse 10. The Bible says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. God said his word will not return to him void. God said when I speak, whatever I speak will materialize. Whatever I speak will work. And God has created us in his image and in his likeness. And God wants us to know this. God wants us to believe this. God wants us to practice this. God said, so shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. What is he saying? He said, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud. Water is a symbol of God's word. Water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. When the word is spoken, the word has the ability to increase and to bring fruition. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And so whenever we speak God's word, the words that goes out of our mouth will accomplish God's purpose as far as that language or that word is concerned. God's word says you are blessed. You declare that I am blessed. God will honor that word. God's word says you are healed. By his stripes you were healed. You declare in the name of Jesus. The word of God says I am healed. So therefore I declare today that I am healed. God's word says that no weapon. No weapon. God's word says that you are blessed. You are blessed. God's word says that it is well with you. God's word says that you are the righteousness of God. God's word says that you are highly favored. Everything that the word of God says, you speak it out. Because God said, my words, he said, so shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but I shall 
accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. When we speak God's word, God's word will prosper. When you speak divine health into somebody's life, that is the word of God. It will prosper. When you bless somebody, that is the word of God. That person will be blessed. What you decree, what you declare is what you become. Stand in the mirror and look at yourself and tell yourself that you're looking so good. Tell yourself that the, the best is yet to come. Prophesy into your life. You are the prophet of your own life. You are the prophet of your own life. Don't wait for some prophet to come and prophesy doom into your life. Don't let some false prophet come and tell you that you are going to die very soon. Don't let some false prophet come and tell you something that you don't want to hear. You have to be extremely careful of what somebody is speaking into your life. I said, be careful of what somebody is speaking into your life because God has made you. You are a prophet. You are a prophet of God. Whatever you speak, whatever you speak has the ability to materialize. So speak blessings into your life. Speak blessings into the life of your children. Speak blessings into your business. Speak blessings into your family. Speak blessings into your marriage. Speak blessings into your bank account. Speak blessings into the lives of your friends. Open your mouth and speak God's word. Because the Bible says that this word of God, when you speak it, it will never come back void. It will accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. So we saw Jesus. Jesus was just gone with this principle. So he speaks to the storm and we see results. He speaks to demons and we see results. The guy spoke to trees and we see results. He speaks to even the dead we see results. He speaks to every circumstance and every situation and we see results. Speaking those things that be not as though they were. Let us build this immune system that will not bring panic, but it will bring hope and faith and trust and confidence in God and begin to speak those things into existence. Those things that do not exist, speak them and you will see the manifestation of it. Somebody say glory. He said, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Hallelujah. It shall prosper. When you speak God's word, it will prosper. See, see, listen to this. Listen to this. There is an unseen force that moves to accomplish words. There are unseen forces that accompany the words that we speak to bring accomplishment. Hallelujah. There are unseen forces. One day, I was with my man of God, and he was traveling. And I had to go and see him off at the airport. We got to the airport very late. And whilst we're just making advancement, we met some of the people who, um, the custom people and every, uh, those who were on the flight, they said, oh, the, the, it's over. No, he said, no, I'll make it. He made it. What are you speaking? Don't let the circumstances and the situation speak to you. Let the word of God speak to you. Don't let news forecasters speak to you. Let Jesus speak to you. Don't let social media speak to you. Let the word of God speak to you. Let the word of God speak to you. Because the word of God does not fail. The word of God does not fail. Everything that God is saying to you shall surely come to pass. His word is here and amen. I said, there is an unseen force that moves to accomplish words. God's word brought the world and the universe into existence. His words. Everything that we see, the world itself, the universe, and everything in this world came into existence through God's word. It came immediately. Jesus, God said, light be. And there was light. God said, light be. And there was light. So when you speak, you when you speak the right language, you get immediate results. Speak exercise, exercise yourself to learn to speak the right language. Learn to speak faith. Learn to speak hope. Learn to speak encouragement. Hallelujah. The word of God brought the world 
and the universe into existence. It came instantly out of nothing. It came out of nothing. Everything that we see came out of nothing. It brings instant healing. The word of God has the ability to bring instant healing. Instant healing. Today, somebody is receiving instant healing. I prophesy instant healing. I release instant healing. I declare you healed instantly now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed now in the mighty name of Jesus. I break every power of the enemy. I break every curse, every negative declarations that have been made by wicked men and wicked women, witches and wizards, people in authority. I overrule them now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. You will not die. You will live to declare the works of God. No evil shall befall you. You are blessed. You will be above only and never be beneath. You will not lose your loved ones. No COVID-19 will come near your dwelling. Kadusa Barakata. Kutusa. Makula Barakatusa Baya. I am speaking my heavenly language. Displacing the devil. Marika Tarusa. Belluas Wakabanda. Everything, every impossibility is becoming a possibility. Every disappointment is becoming an appointment. Every trial is becoming a testimony. Every testing is becoming a testimony. I decree it. I declare it. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. You will have instant healing. The Word of God has the ability to give instant forgiveness. Instant forgiveness. When Jesus said you are forgiven, you are forgiven. And so it has the ability to forgive you instantly of your sin. The Word of God has the ability to deliver you instantly. The Word of God brings fulfillment. You shall have deliverance. You shall have fulfillment in your life. Tell yourself that you will have fulfillment. Tell yourself that you will have deliverance. Tell yourself that the best is yet to come. Prophesy goodness into your life. Speak to yourself. Tell yourself, peace be still. Speak to your inner man, peace be still. Speak to your marriage, peace be still. Speak to your health, peace be still. Whenever Jesus said peace, everything goes silent. Salvation comes through the word of God. The word of God has the ability to give you freedom. It carries freedom. 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 I see somebody being free today. Receive freedom today. And the best thing, the best of all is the word of God never fails. 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 Hallelujah. It will never fail. In the book of Acts, chapter number 4, Acts chapter 4, verse 1. After Jesus was gone, the disciples started doing miracles, started doing wonderful things, healing the sick, doing signs and wonders, and the church went under attack. Acts chapter 4, verse 18. Acts 4, 18. The Bible says, So they called them and commanded, that's Peter and John, commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. They said they shouldn't speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Why was it so? It was so because these this wicked people realized that the miracles and the signs and wonders that these disciples were doing were coming through for them as a result of the things that they were speaking and as a result of Jesus' name. Whenever you speak God's word, and the Bible says that at the mention of the name also, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And so now they were exercising what Jesus taught them. Silver and gold we do not have, but as we have, I give unto you. Receive Jesus now. And then this cripple just gets up and begins to walk. And so now they were being threatened that don't ever teach in the, the, the subject that Jesus taught and don't ever mention the name of Jesus when you do that again we are going to kill you the Bible says in verse 20 they said for we cannot we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard they said we cannot they wanted to stop them from speaking the word of God 
They wanted to stop them from mentioning the name of Jesus. Why was it so? Because they realized that as they mention the name of Jesus and as they teach the word of God, miracles were happening. Signs and wonders were happening. And so it is today. If you open your mouth and you begin to speak the word of God and you mention the name of Jesus Christ, miracles will begin to happen. Why? Because God says, my words will not return back unto me void. It will accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. God's word Word has an assignment. God's word has a purpose. God's word has an accomplishment to accomplish. Hallelujah. And so begin to speak his word into your life. Speak the word into your mind. Speak the word into your business. Speak the word into the, your loved ones. Speak the word of God. They said, no, we cannot. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. They have seen miracles. They have seen Jesus speak to trees and the trees died instantly. They have seen Jesus speak to storms and the storms cease instantly. They have seen Jesus speak to the dead and the dead came alive. They have seen Jesus blessing bread and the bread just multiplied. They have seen and they have heard. So they said, no, we, can't, we cannot. We have to speak the word. Speak the word of God to that situation. It will turn around. Speak the word to that business. It will turn around. Speak the word into the mind of your child. It will turn around. Speak the word of God into that sickness. Demons will begin to tremble at the mention of the name of Jesus. Every knee bows and every tongue will confess that of the truth. Jesus, he is Lord. And when they practice that, verse 20, see what the Bible says in verse 20. Verse 20, They say, for we cannot, but speak the things which we have seen and heard. That's it. That's it. Speak what God wants you to speak. Verse 34, verse 34 confirms everything. They said, no, was there anyone among them who lacked? When you speak the word of God, you never lack. Yeah, verse 34, Acts chapter 4, 34. He said, no. Okay, 33, 33, you say, and with great power, the apostle gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them. When you speak the word of God, God releases great grace over your life. Receive great grace today. Great grace today. Receive great grace today. Receive great grace today. And great grace was upon them all. Nor was there any among them who lacked. You will not lack. Speak to yourself. Tell yourself that I will never lack. Tell yourself that I will never lack. Saints, what we are dealing with is very, very crucial. Very, very crucial. You see, words carry power. Satan knows that. The devil knows that. Look, when you look at Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, see what happened. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said the challenge that we are going through? The challenge that Adam and Eve went through. The problem of our present world was originated from Satan's deception. He realized God has spoken. God has spoken to Adam and Eve to be very careful of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And all that God was demanding from them was obedient to his word. And Satan knows that as long as we are walking in obedience to God's word, no evil shall befall us. We will be protected and we will be preserved. So he went to Eve and said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said, You see, Satan was tricking the woman. God didn't say that they shouldn't eat every tree in the garden. God told them specifically not to touch the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. But Satan went and twisted the whole statement. 
let us be very careful when the enemy twists statements. Let us be very careful when the devil comes in cunningly to twist what God has said. He's good in doing that. Sometimes the man of God will preach and people will understand it differently. He's a twister. Hallelujah. Then he said, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden and of the tree, fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. God said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He deceived the woman. Deceived the woman to disobey God's instruction. Period. God does not want us to disobey his word. God does not want us to disobey his instructions. God does not want us to doubt what he is saying. God wants us to obey his word and it shall be well with you. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let Satan stop you. Hallelujah. He did the same thing also to Jesus in Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, we have to address this thing very well and expose the devil. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4, verse 3. Luke 4, verse 3. He went to Jesus to tempt him. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Satan, come on now. You know who Jesus is. You know that Jesus, he is the Son of God. So why do you go to him and say that if you, let's be very careful of this devil. Let's be very careful of how he operates. He comes in very cunning. He can speak to you to just walk in total disobedience. He can speak to you for you to think that, oh, you do it your own way. He can speak to you. Listen, the Bible says that there is a way that cement right unto man, but the end of it is destruction. And so the way that you are treading, if it is not of God, Stop it and make a sharp U-turn. If how you are operating, if your spirit, if you have the spirit of God in you, he's going to caution you to be very careful of how you are going. Be obedient to God's word. Hallelujah. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. Oh, so Jesus have to prove himself. Satan want to be the one instructing Jesus. He wants Jesus to begin to function according to his lies and his deception. Jesus was constantly depending on his father for protection and provision. Now Satan is telling Jesus that you don't need your father's protection. You don't need your father's preservation. You don't need your father's provision. You, you, if you are the son of God, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, go ahead and do it. Listen to what Jesus said. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said to him, saying, it is written. Jesus told Satan what is written. Jesus told Satan what is written. Jesus was always cautious and mindful of the written word of God. The word of God will not go back void unto him. The word of God that you speak will accomplish each purpose. Listen to this. He said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus said, I am the living bread. He said, I'm the bread of life. Bread is Jesus. And Jesus is the word. And so Jesus is saying to him that, oh, you want me to command stones to become bread. But Jesus answered and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So it means that you can live by the word of God. When you live by the word of God, when you live your life according to God's word, you have a better life. You have a meaningful life. You have a successful life. You have a powerful life. You have a joyful life. You have a fulfilling life. Jesus said, I'm not going to live my life according to the deception, the lies that you are bringing to the table, the twisting of God's word. I witnessed you twisted this word to Adam and Eve in the garden and they bought into that, but not me. It's not going to work. I live my life according to the spoken word of God. It is written. 
It is written. It is written. Find out what is written. Find out the written word of God and begin to practice it. Begin to prophesy it. Begin to declare it in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let me help you out with Hebrews chapter 1. Let me help somebody out with Hebrews chapter 1. This is going to help you so much. Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 1. Hebrews 1 verse 1. You are a prophet of your own life. You are a prophetess over your life, over your home, your business. See what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 1 to 2, he said, God, who at various times, in various ways, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. What is God saying? God is saying that in the early days, in the Bible days, God spoke to our fathers through the prophets. He spoke to our fathers through the prophets so the prophet shows up and they said thou sayest the lord and then they begin to speak the mind of god they bring the message of god they brought the message of god to our fathers but the bible says in verse 2 has in these last days spoken to us by his son in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So this time, God is not speaking to some prophet somewhere to come and tell you anything. God is speaking to you through Jesus Christ. God is speaking to you through Jesus Christ. The word that you are reading, it is life and it is spirit. And so don't wait for somebody to come and tell you your future. Your future has already been declared by Jesus Christ. Your future has already been declared by God. It is in his word. Look for it. Search for it. And you will have a joyful life. Search for what God is saying. Make time. When you see it, claim it. When you see it, prophesy it into your life. Whatever you see in the word of God that you want to have in your life, speak it into your life and it will be yours. Let's read our last scripture, Job chapter 22. Job 22. Job 22, verse 28. He said, you will also declare a thing. You will also, as you hear the word of God, as you read the word of God, as you meditate on the word of God, you will then also declare a thing, declare whatsoever you desire, declare what you want to have. You declare a thing and it will be established for you. What you decree, what you declare, shall be established for you. Now let's look at this. He didn't tell us what you're declaring. And so what this word tells me is that whatever you declare will be established for you. When you declare righteousness, righteousness will be established. When you declare blessing, blessing will be established. When you declare greatness, greatness will be established. When you declare goodness, goodness will be established. I pray this day that the declarations that will come out of your mouth will be full of goodness, will be full of blessing, will be full of grace, will be full of hope, will be full of faith. The Bible says, if you declare a thing, it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. When you declare good things, 
light will shine on your ways. Light will shine on your ways. When you declare the word of God, light will shine in your way. You will not stumble and fall. You will not fail. You will not be disappointed. You will not be sick. Ah, it will be well with you because of light. Light, light. Light is the power of God. Light carries power. Light is sweet. Hallelujah. Light will cause you to shine. Light will cause your home to excel. Light will cause your business to prosper. Declare a thing. Declare a thing and it shall be established. Declare good things. Declare God's blessings. Declare God's grace. Declare God's word. It shall be established. And the word will release light. Light into your path. God richly bless you. Today, I just want you to know that you are a child of God. What you say is what you become. You frame your world with your word. Let the sick say, I'm healed. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the disappointed say, I have an appointment. Let the one who is afraid say, I have faith in God. Do the right thing. Speak the right language. And you will encounter God's blessing. Abraham received God's blessing so much. So, so much. His children received that blessing too. And we are even enjoying this same blessing. Why? Because he obeyed God's voice. He obeyed God's words. Hallelujah. Just be obedient. Just be obedient. Be faithful to God. God got you. God has plans for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, I just want you to walk in the fullness of God's blessing. In the fullness of God's word. And it shall be well with you. Now remember, Abraham received his blessings because he obeyed God. What did God told him? God told him to, God told him to sacrifice his Isaac. And he did not withhold Isaac back. What is your Isaac? Today is Sunday. We are not in our facility, but we are paying rent. We are still paying bills. Hallelujah. And every business that runs bankrupt goes down. And this is the work of God. This is the church of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I will build my church. Jesus declared it. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You are the church of Jesus Christ. You are the one that he is talking about. He said he will build you. He has written it and he has said it. So you don't need to build you. You don't need to rob God. You don't need to withhold anything. He said to Abraham, I will bless you if you obey my words. And he did. Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said it and it is written down. And so let us just obey God. Let's obey God. You have to give your offering. Give your offering. You have to pay your time. Pay your time. As long as you have a job, just keep on doing the right thing. God has the ability to prosper you. Make you a millionaire in the times of farming. Believe him. Believe in his word. He said, believe the Lord your God. You shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. The prophet of God is speaking to you. Do what God says you must do. He has spoken it. He has written it. And it shall come to pass. I will build my church. I will prosper my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You are blessed and highly favored. Go on the church app. Just pay your tithe. Pay your offering. Give to God. I have given to God. People are giving. People are giving. So don't let the devil tell you that. Oh, because we are not going to church.